Okay, so we're back at page one, and um, let's see where we left off. Uh, question 8-14, part A says, for part A, see the back side of this page. We already did that. Uh, and now let's go to part B. Does the interior angle sum depend on whether the polygon is convex? Well, uh, all of the polygons we looked on the back side were convex, but the one shown here is concave. Why is it concave? Well, because it has this piece right here that kind of cuts in. Uh, the way you tell whether or not a polygon is concave or convex is can you draw a segment between two of the vertices such that that segment is outside of the polygon, and that's what we have here. Uh, but that's getting a little bit too deep in the weeds. We don't need to talk about that right now. Uh, but let's see if we can split this thing up into triangles. We sure can. We can split it up into two triangles just like we did before. Uh, so we can say this. All right, folks, there you have it. Uh, the four side concave polygon can still be split into two triangles. So its angle sum is still two times 180 or 360 degrees. I wanna make a special comment right here. What I should really say interior angle sum, interior, interior angle sum, because later in this chapter, we'll be talking about exterior angle sum. So I don't wanna, uh, I wanna set the stage for that. All right, now let's look at part C of the problem. Find the sum of the interior angles of a 100 gun. That's 100 sides, folks. Uh, well, we could split that up into triangles, and I'm guessing it would make 98 triangles. That's the pattern that we had on the back. It's always two less triangles than the number of sides. Uh, so if I want to know the sum of the interior angles, I'll just do 98 triangles times 180 degrees in each of those, and that gives me an angle sum of 17,640 degrees. That's a lot of degrees. Okay, let's move on down now to part D. Part D, learning log. In your learning log, write an expression that represents the sum of the interior angles of an n-gon. Remember, n represents the number of sides in the polygon. I titled this entry, Sum of Interior Angles of a Polygon. We're not going to do that in our learning log because I've provided you some space right here in the notes to do that. Uh, and it's going to look like this. Sum of the interior angles is equal to 180 degrees times the number of sides minus 2. And that's the formula for the interior angle sum of a polygon. Remember that n equals the number of sides n minus 2 is the number of triangles. All right, so let's move down to question 16. Now we're going to do some problems. We're going to see if we can use this new tool, this new tool for the sum of the interior angles of a polygon, and solve some geometric problems. 8-16, use the angle relationships in each of the diagrams below to solve for the given variables. Show all of your work. All right. Well, the way I like to start these problems is first identify what type of polygon we have. So let's go ahead and count sides here. I got one, two, three, four, five, six. That's a seven-sided polygon. So the sum of the interior angles is going to be 180 times 7 minus 2, and that's 900 degrees. So I'm simply going to set up an equation where I show all of these angles, all of those angle measurements adding up to 900. Let's start with 133 and work our way around there counterclockwise. Just fit that in there. And if we go ahead and combine like terms here on the right hand side, we're gonna have, let's see, there's one M, two M's, three, we got three M's. And then all of those uh, numbers, I can add those up. That gets me 501. I do 133 plus 120 plus 13 plus 138 plus 106 minus 9. Uh, now I'm going to subtract 501 from both sides. That gives me 399 degrees. Has to equal 3 times M. Divide both sides by 3. I get M equals 133. 
All right, let's take a look at part B. Part B, well, I have how many sides? One, two, three, four, five, six. And I know the sum of the interior angles has to be 180 times six minus two. That's 720 degrees. And this is our friend, the hexagon. So we should, that, that's one that after we use this a couple times, we're just gonna remember hexagon, 720 degrees. So I got 720 degrees equals x plus x plus i got to do this six times because there's six of those that are all the same one two three four five six so 720 degrees equals six times x let's divide both sides by six and we get x equals 120 degrees um, let, it's worth noting here that this isn't just any plain old hexagon this is a regular hexagon why is it called regular? Because all the sides are the same length and all the angles are the same measure. Okay, so let's move down to the next problem here, part part C. Uh, things are getting a little trickier. Uh, this one, uh, let's see how many sides we have. There's actually two different polygons, three actually. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna trace out two of them that we're gonna analyze separately. So first, I'm gonna kind of take a look at that triangle, uh, and I'll do that up here first, uh, and then. I'll take a look at this polygon here, which looks like that's five sides. Let me, let me make sure that's five sides. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's five-sider. Uh, so I'm gonna take a look at the work for that five-sided polygon down here. Let's jump back up and look at the triangle though. Uh, the triangle is an isosceles triangle and um, I'm gonna mark each angle here those base angles are congruent. Uh, and I'm gonna need one of those angle measurements here in a little bit, that's why I'm doing this. So I have x plus x plus 64 has to equal 180 degrees. We go ahead and uh, do some algebra here. I get 2x equals 116. That's what I get if I do 180 minus 64. Divide out both sides by x and we get x equals 58 degrees. That's gonna come in handy in, a, in just a moment. So now let's take a look at that five-sided polygon, that uh, strange-looking pentagon there. I'm gonna go ahead and set up an equation to add up, uh, to first look at the total of the interior angles. I got that 180 times n minus two, and then I'm gonna just go around and add up all the angles in that pentagon. I'm gonna start with 88. That's that guy right there. Then I got 64 up at the top. And this one, be very careful with this one right here. Let me, let me kind of identify that one. That's X plus 90. And X is 58. And then I got that 90. And we gotta move this, folks. This is gonna be in the way. All right, now that I got that repositioned, we got, uh, uh, let's jump back in here and make sure we're including all the angles in that green pentagon. I got 88, uh, the 64 up at the top there. I've got X, which is 58 plus 90. I've captured that, so I've got this guy. Uh, I've got a 96 degree angle, and then I've got K, which is actually what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and solve this equation. On the left-hand side, I got 180 times 3. That's 540 degrees. On the right-hand side, I'm gonna add up all the, the numeric values, uh, 88 plus 64 plus 58 plus 90 plus 96. That gives me 396. And then I got that lonely K out there. Uh, I'm gonna subtract 396 from both sides. And that gives me a value of K at 144 degrees. All right, folks, we got one more to do. And this one's a, this one's a tricky one, uh, not gonna lie to you. Uh, let's start with our usual uh, first step, which is counting the number of sides. We got one, two, three, four, five. I see this is another pentagon problem, so we know that we got that 180 times five minus two. It's gonna be 540 degrees. So our equation is gonna start 540, some of the interior angles equals something. So let's go ahead and look at the angles that we have uh, in this polygon. Let me make sure first you see polygon right there, five sides. Uh, but I also have 
I also have our friend the Z shape. That means I have alternate interior angles that are congruent. This angle here, whoop, writing with the highlighter, not effective. This angle here has to equal this angle here. And if this angle here is x, that means this angle is 180 minus x. So I think now I have all of the angles that are in the pentagon. Let me just look. I got 135. I got 2y, I got 3y, I got x, and I got 180 minus x. Now, at first glance, you might be concerned. You might say, hey, Mr. Vass, there's two different variables in here, and we're only going to have one equation, so that's going to be a problem. But maybe things will work out for us. Let's see. 135 plus 2y plus 3y plus x plus 180 minus x. Oh, a little bit of magic happens. Look at this x and 1 minus x cancel out, and we're left with the following. 135 plus 180 gives me 315. 2y and 3y is 5y. On the left-hand side, it's still 540. So let's go ahead and subtract 315 from both sides. That gives me 225 degrees equals 5y. Final answer y equals 45 degrees. Folks, that's it. Please take a look at the review preview and get back to me if you have any questions.